Scientists now, to help the honeybees, they got this very weird idea. So they got this bacteria from the honeybee gut. They took them out, transformed them, changed them. And when they put them back, that bacteria is now able to help the bees to fight against viruses and varroa mite, the number one enemy of honeybees. How is that possible? Welcome to InsideTheHive.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and want to know more about them, please consider to subscribe and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. Researchers from the University of Texas come up with something really amazing to help the honeybees. As you probably know, honeybees are facing one of the biggest challenges in their life, the mite called varroa destructor. The mite feed on the fat bodies of the honeybees, compromising the energy resources of the bees and transmitting viruses in doing so. In the past, researchers have tried successfully to use RNAi to fight against honeybee viruses and varroa mite. If you don't know what RNAi is, it stands for RNA interference. And this is a natural process in the cell to shut down gene expression. Very basically, if you want to shut down a gene expression of a virus inside the cell, for example, you just need to know the genetic code of that specific virus. Then you produce a double-strand RNA molecule with the same genetic code of the virus that you want to fight and give that to the honeybees to make the cells of the honeybees fight that specific virus. So if you want to shut down a specific gene, you just need to give the cell the code the cell needs in the form of a double-strand RNA so the cells are able to collect that code, identify the target, and shut down the gene expression of that specific gene. And one of the coolest part of that is that the whole process is very specific, meaning the cell is not going to shut down anything else other than the code that you give it to the cell. And that's the, one of the main reasons a lot of people got really excited with RNAi uh, today because the potential. For example, for a pesticide, we can produce today using this technology pesticides very specific for the target that we want that's not going to kill anything else other than the insect that you want, for example. And that's a very powerful tool that we should be considering to use even more. But of course, there is always a problem. And the problem here is, uh, in order to make it happen, to make it work, we, we need to produce a lot of double-strand RNA because RNA are not a stable uh, molecules. And so, for, for example, for honeybees, if you want to activate RNAi in a honeybee, you need to give a huge amount of double-strand RNA so the double-strand RNA is able to get and pass through the gut and activate, this, activate the cells that need to be activated. So, this is the problem. It's very expensive to produce that huge amount of double-strand RNA that we need. But here is the beauty of the idea of the researchers at the University of Texas. What if, if we get a bacteria that the bees already have in their gut, a bacteria from uh, very healthy bees, and we just transform that bacteria and make the bacteria to produce the double-strand RNA that we need to help the bees? This idea is so powerful and, so, and solve the problem in so many different levels. For example, if you produce that bacteria, the bacteria will be producing constantly the double-strand RNA, and so we don't need to produce uh, outside the bees in a laboratory conditions, which is very expensive. Second, the, the bacteria is going to be exactly where it's supposed to be to activate RNAi system. So we just need a couple of bacteria to 
to solve the whole problem. You know, the bacteria is going to be in the right place, producing the right amount of double strand RNA to activate the system, and the bacteria can be passed through trophylaxis through the bees. So with a single, it's just a small amount of bacteria, if it works, one bee can pass through the other bees, and one hive can pass through the other hives, and all of a sudden we have a full solution and the bacteria protecting the whole apiary. Fantastic idea. The first thing the research uh, demonstrated was a uh, proof of concept. So they got the bacteria, they transformed the bacteria to start to produce, uh, uh, they insert a gene in that bacteria to produce a fluorescence protein. So when they put the bacteria back inside, that they give to the honeybees. So they need to show that the bacteria, the modified bacteria is, is able to survive with the modification in the environment they are, they're gonna be in. So they transform the bacteria, they put it back, and they got a very amazing result. The whole gut become fluorescent, showing that the bacteria was not only expressing the gene, but also propagating the bacteria and establishing themselves in the gut, which is a proof of concept. Now they have the power. Now they have a new tool. Now they're supposed to be very excited, like I am right now. Now that the researchers got this new tool, they feel very powerful. They might be thinking, okay, what are I gonna do now? What I need to prove next? So what they need to prove next is, can I use this bacteria to produce double strand RNA that's gonna shut down genes inside uh, the bees? So that's exactly what they try to do. So they got the bacteria, they transform the bacteria, they make the bacteria to express double strand RNA against two uh, genes of the honeybees responsible for the insulin pathway. And they got some fantastic results. Just switching gears a little bit here, if you like this kind of content and want to see more of this kind of videos, please consider to support me on Patreon. Please visit patreon.com slash inside the hive TV to know more how can you support me in my journey. Thank you very much. So as you probably know, the insulin pathway is responsible for the recognition and control of sugars. In, inside the body. So any disturbance in this pathway can potentially uh, cause alteration in the sugar metabolism. When they use the bacteria to shut down two specific genes of this pathway in honeybees, they found something very interesting. They, they, they were able to show that the bees that consume the bacteria, producing double strand RNA, shutting down specific genes of the apes mellifera, the honeybees, in the insulin pathway, make the bees become fat. Yeah, fat bees compared with the controls. Meaning, they now were able to show that the system was working. The bacteria was able to produce a double strand RNA, that double strand RNA is uh, activating RNAi system and shutting down the gene expression of these speci two specific genes. And that was messing up with the system. So the, and they proved that showing that the bees were getting fat and with other molecular techniques. If we stop right here, and only with these things that I just said, this is already amazing by itself for, for the research potential that we have here. We have a new tool that we can control gene expression of honeybees. So now, for example, we can try to find out every, the function of every single gene inside the honeybee genome. And that's very exciting, very powerful tool for us researchers to, to play with. So the researchers then get this new tool. They get the bacteria, and this time they make the bacteria to produce double-strand RNA against the formal wing virus the most devastating virus that honeybees face today. This virus can cause a lot of deformities in the bees, make the bees, and they die very fast. A very terrible virus that we don't have any solutions against. But after the experiment, they got something really cool, very interesting results. So they got the bacteria, make the bacteria to produce double strand RNA against the virus, give that bacteria to the honeybees. Then after that, they inject the virus to see if the bacteria is going to be protected against that virus. And what they found was fantastic. The honeybees that have the bacteria producing double-strand RNA against the virus, they survive much longer compared with the control group, which just demonstrates that 
The double strand RNA inside the bacteria inside the honeybees are able to activate the RNAi pathway and protect the bees against that virus infection. Fantastic, amazing. Now at least we have hope that something is coming to help the bees in that subject. Very exciting news, very exciting. But, but, of course, researchers never stop. They try, they always want more and more. And they, they start to think, all right, so I was able to get the bacteria and was successful against the virus. Can I be also successful against the little thing, that nasty thing called varroa destructor that feed on the bees and transmit that virus so I can just go to the root of the problem and just eliminate the problem right there. That's exactly what they try to do. So, but the idea here is different because the varroa might fit on the fat body. So they need to make a bacteria that produce the double strand RNA inside the honeybee gut. And this double strand RNA need to be available around the fat body. So when the varroa might feed on that fat body, they get the double strand RNA activate their own RNAi pathway and because the researchers are very smart they put a bacteria that can produce that goes against 14 different genes that, that are essential genes for the varroa mite to survive so when the when the mite feed on the fat body containing that double strand RNA around 14 different genes in their own body is going to shut down and they're going to die I know that sounds a little too much to, to process, but it's super cool. So what we have now is a bacteria inside the honeybees producing double strand RNA that the mite is gonna eat and activate their own RNAi pathway, shutting down their own genes and die in the process. Fantastic. Did they get the results? Yes, they did. Unbelievable. Unbelievable! If that's true, if people confirm that, when other scientists can confirm that and we can move forward with that direction, this is really exciting for the honeybee health world. F fantastic news! Congratulations to all the researchers. I I'm really proud of you guys, really happy for the results you got. I uh, really hope you can collaborate one of these days. Now, the big question, of course. When are we gonna have this? Can we use it? When are we gonna have uh, it's gonna be available? Well, the short answer for that is I don't think we're gonna see that in the market soon, or even maybe never. Uh, so maybe because first, there is a lot of work to do. The researchers need to prove a lot of things about safety. They need to go in every single stage of the honeybees to see if there is any thing that's being affected on the whole uh, development of the honeybees. They need to look at the queens to see if there is any interference with the, how the queens uh, process uh, their metabolism and uh, things like that. There is a lot of work regarding the safety for the honeybees. There is a lot of work regarding safety to the environment. They need to show that this new bacteria, if they spread, it's not going to be damage, damaging the environment somehow. Uh, which is very unlikely because the technology that we are talking about is very specific but we need to test we need to test everything and that takes time it's gonna so there is a lot of work to do the other problem is there is a constant fear from people especially beekeepers and environmentalists about against GMOs themselves people are scared about that and they tend to shut down uh, any rationale behind the use of GMOs and that that might be something that we can talk in another video if we're going to start to talk about GMOs right now and the potential and all the pros and cons about that is going to take forever and that's not the intention of this specific video right now so if you want to see a video like that please uh, let me know in the comment section below uh, I would love to, to know your thoughts about it if you like this video please hit the like button uh, share with friends and family, leave a comment, leave your question, I'll try to address all of them. Uh, if you want to subscribe, please click the logo right here, 
right here. Uh, if you want to watch more videos, you can find a couple of new videos right here. Uh, and that's where I live it. Thanks for watching InsideTheHive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.